Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. Thanks for tuning in. Today I've got a tip for you that you might not expect. The first part of it might make a lot of sense to you. The second part might be something that you, you aren't nearly as familiar with. Uh, before I get into that, I just want to remind you guys to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. We give out daily tips, tricks, every little bit of everything in the fishing world. So if you enjoy the channel, hit that subscriber button. It also gets you entered into my monthly prize drawing giveaways. Really no reason not this not to subscribe if you have not subscribed already. Uh, I also want to point out that if you go to the description and click the link to the real shot, Dot com. Uh, it's a tackle shop in Wisconsin. They have great prices, lots of really good selection. If you use the discount code STEFIN10, you'll get 10% off your order. Helps the channel out, helps you guys save a little bit of money as well. Uh, so we're sitting here at St. Clair. I'm fishing the Bass Pro Tour stop number seven. I qualified by finishing in the top four at the St. Lawrence River in the Pro Circuit event. So I got to fish this event as well. Uh, I just wrapped up the first couple days of the elimination round. I finished in 14th place out of the uh, 40 guys I fished against in Group A. So I move on to the knockout round. I fish tomorrow. It'll be the uh, top 40 guys uh, that get to fish the top 10 advance on to uh, the final day's round. So one of the things I wanted to talk about has to do with uh, something that I noticed out on Lake St. Clair, and it was actually a video topic that I was going to talk about prior to this. You know, in the summer months and early fall months, one of my favorite things to fish for largemouth is matted dead vegetation. And what I mean by that is the stuff that gets cut up and torn up floats to the shoreline and you get these floating mats of ve vegetation up against the bank. Sometimes, you know, they're in that much water. Sometimes they're in five feet of water. Just depends on how much water is below it, wherever the wind pushed these mats up into. And these floating vegetation mats are excellent because they do several things. They create shade. So on hot summer days, those fish that want to get out of shade will go under those mats. When you start working into the early part of the fall, when water temperatures are cooling, those mats will actually hold temperature and hold heat so those fish will prefer to stay under those mats because they are actually warmer than some of the surrounding water. So it works both ways. A lot of times people don't think about fishing those mats in the in the, the early fall stages, but they can be really, really good that time of year as well. It's one of those things that, uh, you know, the people that are familiar with this know how good it can be, but a lot of times I think they go really overlooked because it's just, you know, grass mats that float up against the bank. Sometimes the mats are only that big. I mean, they really don't have to be big. Other times they're 30 feet or it's an entire bank that it just has grass floating up against it. Uh, you see this quite frequently with eelgrass. If you get a strong wind or you have heavy boat traffic, you're on a lake that just has tons of pleasure boat traffic, that eelgrass gets ripped up really easily and floats up wherever the wind pushes it. The one thing is sometimes these mats are so thick, you need a really heavy weight to punch through them. I'm talking an ounce and a half, two ounce, you know, if it's those eelgrass mats, you get the, the root system and everything that comes with it, the entire, you know, 25 strands of eelgrass. So they can be really compacted and really pushed tight because if you had strong wind, they will really stack them up and they'll get really thick. So you do need really heavy tackle. It's the same thing you'd use if you're punching hyacinth mats or uh, milfoil mats. You know, you're talking about an ounce to two ounce weights, heavy braided line, heavy action rods, and it's just a matter of punching in, yo-yoing it up and down and, and getting your bites. When this is on, it's almost like every mat you go to, you'll catch a fish. It's really can be fantastic fishing. It's one of my favorite ways to fish. So that's one thing I wanted to point out to you guys. Don't overlook those floating vegetation mats. But here's the second part to this, guys. I'm doing this on Lake St. Clair this week. I have got tons and tons of floating eelgrass that's around me. I'm two miles offshore in the middle of the lake. And all this heavy wind we've had, the boat traffic rips up the eelgrass and they just start, it floats everywhere in the lake. But the thing is you'll get areas where the eelgrass will form mats 
out on the lake. I'm talking almost as thick as you'd find up against the shore. I mean, some of them are the size of my boat. Some of them are three feet by three feet. And some of them are 50 feet by 50 feet, just solid eelgrass. They'll get all compacted up. And when that happens, that creates a shaded area. I've been noticing this week that I get a lot of fish when the sun's out, will come and sit under my boat. I can see them on my Lorance Active Target. And a lot of times what happens is I'll get bait that schools up under the boat because it's it finds the shade and it sits under the boat because of that. Well, you give it an, a, a, you know, a few minutes and next thing you know, there's a bass under the boat sitting right by the shad. So once I identified that this week, and I've been able to catch a lot of those fish in the tournament and in practice, I started going, you know what? That eelgrass mat does the same thing. It provides shade. Well, sure enough, I can go over there. I can scan under the eelgrass mat. I'm seeing tons of bait and I'm seeing bass sitting under them. So don't think that the, the mats are only largemouth related and don't think they have to be up against the shore. You know, these mats are miles offshore and they are working just as good as the mats up against the shore. You know, when I'm fishing this clear water here and I'm in 12-ish foot of water, well, because it's such clear water, that shadow is being cast all the way to the bottom and it's working really well. So you need to sometimes think outside of the box. You know, if you've got a pattern that works for one species, it can work for the other species and it's just something that I think you guys wanna be aware of. So that's today's tip. I hope this was helpful. You want to translate what's going on in the water, understand why it's happening, and then apply what you've learned to catching those fish. And in this case, it's really helping me in this tournament. I mean, I've got to check at this point. I'm going fun fishing tomorrow. Uh, so we'll see what happens, you know, but if the sun comes out, you better believe I will be going to some of those mats or if i come across them on the water i will be fishing them because i know that they've been holding fish right now it's starting to rain so i'm going to close up my boat before everything gets wet and uh, hopefully the sun comes out tomorrow so i can go fish some of those mats so thanks for watching guys if you enjoy the channel hit that subscriber button share it on your social media pages and hit the like button so i appreciate all you watching stay tuned for tomorrow's tips and tricks